Hey, this is Vince Scanlon, and I'm joined by Jamie Faulkner, and you're watching the Octagon Open 4 Grand Final, hosted on an FFTCG blog. <laughs> uh, hi, Vince. Uh, well, first of all, I'm, <laughs> I'm sad I'm not actually playing here. I really do wish I'd beaten Josh, but it wasn't meant to be, and it rarely is when I play against Josh, it seems. But uh, I think this is going to be an interesting matchup. I actually did speak to both players com like completely by coincidence. I didn't know I'd be recording this with you. And they both said they felt they were unfavoured, <laughs> sort of. Um, I I would say that I think the matchup is... I, the, the longer the game goes, the more likely Ice is going to get ahead in the Valley race. But the Josh's deck... The, uh, they're both called Josh. That is going to really irritate me. The Ice we'll Lightning... Yeah, we'll G. Call G and Freeman. Yeah, okay. So Freeman's deck has more scumbag ways of winning. Uh, it has three Shivas, three Lightnings. So expect to see Josh try and make use of the, the more ways that he can dole two things in a turn and just get a scumbag win out. I think if it's going to be a fair game of FFTCG, the Mono Ice deck is probably in the lead for it because it just attacks Josh's uh, Freeman's hand too much. Mm. Yeah, I also spent... Um, I spent about three hours with Josh today practicing the matchup. Uh, the, the, sorry, Freeman. <laughs> Jeez, that's going to be hard. Um, by, the, by the way, for people watching, we'll, put, uh, we'll be putting attachments to the deck list in both uh, in the, sorry, in the description for the video so you can find the deck list there and have a look at them. Really interesting. Deck lists were public before the match, so you'll be able to know what everyone's playing. But yeah, it's a really, really tricky matchup. Like, um, I think what's really hard is basically basically Josh is just playing a less consistent version. Well, this is very simplified in saying this, but it's, it's less consistent than um, uh, Freeman's version rather than G's version. But uh, it's got a lot more power in the th in the sense that you're playing Al Cid and you're playing Lightning. You play the like uh, you know Black Mage Cid range, uh, Black Mage Cid range combos and such like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's also one more interesting thing is if you look at the sort of top eight decks uh, of this tournament, I would say that the, these two decks that have made the final are both the, the two most inconsistent decks of the top eight. They both have a really low amount of two drop backups and they're kind of relying on using Devout as a kind of two drop backup early game. It seems that both players have uh, had a fairly okay turn one, but their first kind of first three turns for both of these decks are really hit and miss they can be really powerful and they can be really really weak um what do you think about the inconsistency they kind of and look, look at this it's kind of a weak turn two by uh freeman what do you think about that um yeah i was playing uh, it's like well they're both at exactly 16 backups each mm. um which is low and uh like that's about as low as i would ever take a deck in terms of backups, I doubt, doubt, like, unless I'm doing something kind of strange, I wouldn't ever take it much lower than that. But I was doing a lot of test hands, and it's just like so often you only open one or two. Yeah. Um, you like, and often it's often it's one, two drop backup, and then turn two, you're playing, uh, like, so. uh, Duke Lug or something. Mm. And then, but so I did find them rather slow to roll out, but when they roll out quick, um, what this ice deck, if it can roll out backups really, really quick. It has all of the tools to use them, um, which yeah. is odd because that's like actually one of the biggest strengths of the deck is the fact that it's so easy, able it's so able to fill its curve every single turn. But it didn't have the backups very often uh, to do that. Like I mean, you need to you actually need a good hand. Yeah, playing playing the mono ice deck that I did today, I realized that the the evokers or the summoners, what are the one drop ice backups called? I can't remember. But the one drop ice backups, uh, they are often. Huh? Yeah. They're, they're summoners. There's one. Oh, there. summoners. They're often just two drop backups. You you can like often you just have to play them turn one, and it basically means that instead of five two drop backups, uh, Toby and Josh's uh, Josh G's deck has uh, kind of eight if you count the summoners as sort of two drop backups. So it means that his deck is a <laughs> bit more consistent, and since it's playing mono, it, it, it is more consistent in that aspect. But it's. It's a really, it's really hard for them to get a hand where they have like two or three backups in hand and not flooded with shivers because they need to see their shivers late, not early. And sometimes it's really awkward and they have to discard a bunch. And you see that uh, G here has actually discarded a shiver just now. Mm. So let's actually talk about how the game's going for both of them. Who do you think is doing 
Well, who do you think has gotten past the inconsistency better? Well, that's what I'm I'm trying to look at now. So we're only on we're only on turn three, but this is um. It's really hard to say. So what I was talking to Josh about, uh, what I was talking about to Freeman about, um, is that I think the best the best way for G to play this is uh, lean on the fact that his deck is way more consistent and that it's able to always fill its curve. Whereas Josh's deck is two colors and a lot of the things that he's going for are one two combos like El Cid Onion. Um, Sid Reigns, Rick, yeah. Uh, so, yes, Sid Reigns with some some of the damage. Um, so often, if you can force a simplified game state, if you can force uh, force Freeman to basically be in the position where uh, it's like you, you have like two cards in your hand, use them now, use them this turn. You don't get another hand. Um, then you're going to it, it, a, lot, a lot of the time Freeman's going to whiff. Um, so that's the best way to kind of play it. It's weird because. It, you want to really simplify the board state as it's building up, but then later when the game gets to the point where you're like fi everyone's five forwards wide, that's actually also the part where mono ice wins because their forwards are bigger. So it's not necessarily the, that they have like an, a, a more aggressive. It's it's hard to say whether it's an early game advantage or a late game advantage, but you'll have to do a lot of plays in this deck where all your backups are tapped down. You'll look at your hand. You'll be like, "There's a four drop." And I should discard two cards to play it right now, just because it turns up the aggro and forces Freeman to uh, make more awkward turns. Whereas your deck can survive on top decks. Yeah, I, I think I think the point you're trying to make is that Josh needs to be the initiator. G G is quite happy <laughs> for the game. Me. Yeah, Freeman is meant to be the initiator. He he needs things to happen. Whereas G he can kind of wait back a little bit and let his uh, hand attack start really taking advantage of Josh. And that it kind of, you know, you're saying about discarding two to play a four drop, but Freeman really needs to protect his hand by keeping as many bad cards in it as possible, uh, but basically keeping his hand as big as possible for as long as possible, because as soon as he gets to zero cards, <laughs> G is going to start attacking it every turn, and basically he's going to force Josh to top deck every single turn for four or five turns, and that's when he's going to win the game. So Josh, Josh is in a kind of awkward position where he, he needs to be aggressive, but he needs to keep five cards in hand almost every turn. Otherwise, G's just going to play a three so plan. If, Fre if Freeman, if Freeman can get out uh, another backup this turn, then he's actually in like one of the better situations from what we found testing. Um, but it's like it would need to be like a mog to fill his curve because really, if he could get like one, two backups out this turn, then he's fine. In fact, that's like the dream situation right now. Everything's balanced. He's got enough uh, resources that he can kind of slow play and then line up a combo. Um, and there's not too much threat of like discard disruption, just because it's it's just that fine point of the game where he's got just enough cards in hand and just enough resources. But right now, behind on backups, it's definitely looking like G is favored. And that's, uh, it's that's looking really like it's going to be an onion knight play as well. Oh, it's going to be a Sid Reigns. Yeah, Sid Reigns and Sets are very nasty as a combo. It's worth noting that uh, oh, that she, uh, G has just discarded Shiva as well. So yeah. I mean, we, we should pr probably keep an account of the Shivas because it's going to be the big, big biggest factor of the win. Oh, 100%. The Shivas in both decks are some of the most important cards in the deck. Um, so we'll definitely be keeping account of how many are in graveyards the whole time. It's one of the most important parts of the matchup is keeping count of how, where those shivers are. Mm, and, and you're kind of, it gets to the point in the mid game when you're playing against an ice deck, especially if if you are an ice deck as well, where both players are kind of counting the amount of shivers and doing a bit of quick maths oh, yes. to see. Yeah, and there's the combo. That's Sidney. Josh's favorite combo, yeah. and that filled out his curve yeah, perfectly as well. Okay. Um, yeah, Freeman like looking in a good spot now. So it's going to get to the point where they're both kind of like predicting how likely the opponent is to have the Shiva and making risky plays based on it. Because it's going to come to a point where both of them are going to be dead to Shiva. And one interesting aspect of that is they're both playing Celis. And Josh was actually talking to me about it. And he was saying that in the in his testing games, he noticed that Celis is special. Uh, runic... What is it called? Runic? Yeah, just Runic. Yeah, It's, just it's actually runic. super relevant. Runic yeah, or Runic Power or something. But it's... It's super relevant um, in these ice mirrors because if you can runic a Shiva, you probably just win the game because you actually activate something and uh, you know essentially stop two things from being goal. 
that uh that literally happened in one of our test games yeah we like uh double runicked each other but like any one of them would have been a complete blowout because runicon like shiva is a, by itself a blowout and if you can negate shiva that's like a counter blowout if you were leaning on it to win the game anyway freeman is not as uh in as good a position as i thought he was but the mog was definitely the best card that he could have had just before um if he can line up it's it's really gonna lean on whether or not he gets alcid combo through or whether or not um if he has lightning in his hand new legendary lightning he can dull down that entire board swing through two damage and be on the initiative um and that'll be really strong but there are a lot of cards in hand i'm trying to speculate as to what g is holding right now the one card It's probably a four drop of some kind, or one of his uh, FF6 pieces, or a Shiva. Because he's already discarded a Shiva, so it's, it's really bad if he has to discard another, especially since Josh has basically double the amount of Shivas. Also, another thing to note is deck out actually is, is something that may happen in these games. I think um, two of the games in the semi-finals... Because of the... Flans and just capability. Yeah, with, uh, both shivers. both decks actually draw a lot of cards as well. Like Setsa draws a lot of cards. Josh has like three or four different three drop searches. Uh, G has uh, sorry Freeman has like three or four different three drop searches. G has loads of Setsa. He has the six package and he has a uh, Flan that gets rid of three cards from your deck or two, I guess. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. it might just come down to a big stalemate, and that's I think that's what happened in the. In the semi-final, I think two games actually came down to deck out uh, in the Josh G versus Toby game. Which is mm. really crazy in, in the kind of aggro deck. I played six games with uh, Josh today, I think, and one of them one of them, it was like deck out was very much a factor. One, one of us almost lost by deck out. Um, so it's like, re that's a reasonably high percentage that it could definitely come up. And mm. it, another really interesting thing is the fact that you've got searches into searches into searches because you can... Yeah. Um, you can go Setsa for Banana Sid, Banana Sid for Setsa, Setsa for Terra, Terra for Shiva. <laughs> it's really silly. But it's also really cool because you can consistently feel like you're... It's one of the great strengths of, like, the Ice Package right now is the fact that it's so able to... Yeah, one, one of the like Ice Package's many strengths. They can discard, they can dole freeze, they can search better than water. You know, well, they, can do, they can do lots of damage, like ping-based damage. Uh... Tell us, tell us how many games you lost to Shiva. <laughs> honestly, I mean, I've been saying this to a lot of people because I'm getting fed up with it. But I honestly think I've lost to Shiva as a at, like top deck Shiva more than I've lost to any card combined in the entire game. <laughs> and I think most, if you ask most top players, and you say what card have you lost to more than anything else, they won't say Alcid, they won't say Kagnazo, they won't say the Emperor. They will say Shiva, it's Shiva. because it's just it's yeah. Do, you can uh, never plan do, around uh, it. You event like you're eventually your opponent is going to top deck an ice card and Shiva, and they could win the game with that. And it, it's like you, you <laughs> can control your your opponent's board. You can control their hand as much as you want, but you can't oh, stop them from having oh, two cards at the top of the deck. We're not paying attention. Oh, we're not. <laughs> I'm just ranting about Shiva now. <laughs> so an Elsid combo hit and it killed a lock. After the Seymour um, killed the first lock as well. So it looks like this is Josh's kind of favorite. Oh, okay, I'm seeing. It's really well, confusing yeah, when they play things is... with the board upside down. But oh this, this is what Josh yeah, uh, Freeman I've... wants to do. He wants to flood the board and start Jeez, party attacking. Uh, G ended up on the wrong side of the board, um, like watching from the wrong side of the board. Yeah, it must be which... awkward for him. Um, it's probably a little bit tilting. To play it out. I would have, yeah, if I if I was him, I would have 100 percent just remade the game. Yeah, like definitely, I would I would 100 percent ask for a remake. Especially since he's played yeah, his, his fifth backup in the room. Like, there is a Sarah on Freeman's board, and I'm like, he is very far ahead. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, when he played that, I was like, oh my god, how can G win from here? But <laughs> <laughs> oh well, um, that's basically as good as what I thought the Sarah was. You know, like this is insane. So this is um, the threat that Josh's deck does is if it has a good mid game and uh, G hasn't simplified it enough. The lightning cards are so much more aggressive than the mono ice does. 
But G is um, G is so... literally only a Terra or a Zalira away from completely dominating this board again. It's and that's that's what these ice uh, games are like. You can never attack into them because they have so many good ways of wiping your board when you're dole. And if you don't attack, then eventually you'll just get dole frozen or shivered. It's it's a really really difficult game. But the Duke Clark coming to... out for G is really relevant. The longer that goes on, the the more value he's going to get from that. Because none none of no, Josh's actually... forwards, uh, Freeman's forwards, will contend now. The Terra for one discard and playing the Terra and then tapping all your backups can remove um, everything. Uh, El Cid and uh, Cid Reigns. Um and then you're you're up on forwards. But then uh, Josh still, uh, oh, sorry, Freeman still has the threat of of like top deck a, top decking a lightning. He's got the thirteen backup and then. Mm, I was about to say, then Genesis gets through too, but it doesn't matter because you're dead. So. Well, he, uh, I mean, G's got Bard. He's got two Bards, so it's unlikely he dies next turn. But it's this is the point that the Ice Lightning deck tries... Or both the Ice decks try to get you to... They try and get you to like four or five points of damage. And then they're going to just kind of take it easy for the next two or three turns. They're going to chill until they have a Shiva or maybe two Shivas. Yeah, you know, because yeah. sometimes it takes more than one Shiva. They need like extra skill. But that is that is the board state that they're trying to get to. So now, ah, he did it preemptively. I'm not sure I like that play. So so the, okay, so that's an interesting um, play. Basically, what happened is to stop an attack. No, an no, no. It was purely because G used Flan to make Josh discard a card. So jo uh, to make Freeman discard okay. a card. Now Freeman is worried that oh, now right. now he's going to be forced that to discard another it. card. So he'd rather get one yeah. goal off rather than two. But it's kind of led very nicely right, into... Makes, yeah. It's a good play from both players. It's kind of forward thinking from both players. If I was Josh, if I was Freeman, I probably wouldn't have used Shiva there because the the downside is way higher than the upside, I think. Because now, because no, um, G well, didn't got, have a way. Here's the thing, he's got Sid Woff on the board here, so he could bring that back regardless. Like, oh, that's he true. knew that he could get rip the Shiva out of his hand. So yeah... Good, um, good. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Freeman. Would he have been able to? Yeah. Would he have been able to do that and play the Sid Alstein? Probably. Yeah, because he yeah. has one backup spare. Yeah. Okay, so, so that so that was that was pretty amazing, and he had Terra in hand as well. Look at the amount. Obviously, of... these guys are paying more attention to the game than we are. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, all I said was he needed side. to play Terra. One Terra kills two things here as well. It's a shame he had to discard it. But I don't. It's that's the thing though. Um. Freeman still has so many things that he can top deck. Like, well, or at least I'm just thinking of like, there's the Shivas, there's uh, the Terror to search a Shiva. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because he can't actually kill the Genesis also, here. There's also legendary lightning. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. Yeah. It's just it's a Genesis. I don't know. I, why. I think oh, he kind I, of has okay, to. No. He can't kill the Genesis because yeah, he could top deck Genesis and win. Um. He exactly, can't kill Al Cid because so the same it. thing. Um. It, it's also really awkward to kill. There's like there's nothing good to kill here. <laughs> How annoying is it that you can't kill Genesis when he's the best body on the board? Oh, actually, no. Josh, uh, Freeman just wins this turn because he's going to attack and uh, use... if, if he draws. No, no, it doesn't need a party oh. attack. He's going to use the black, black mage. mage. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even spot the black. So if he so if he draws a lightning, a lightning card, card, Freeman has won the game one. But you never know. Freeman um, might still not see it. I didn't see something like that against him, and it lost me the game. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any experts that no, there's no experts no, in the deck. There's, there's uh, Sid Alstein and the Shiva that hits dull things. So could is it's, there any uh, experts still... that draws him a card, that draws G a card? No. Okay, then no, the game is probably over. Oh, he didn't draw an ice card. He didn't draw a lightning card, or he just didn't what? see the play. He wouldn't. He wouldn't party attack if he drew a lightning card. Surely not. Jo uh, uh, Josh he must is have pretty just. Good. Josh yeah, pretty... he must have just not drawn the lightning card. That's really unfortunate. But at yeah. least we get to see more games, more more turns, it's... more games. <laughs> how how much would it suck if you lost off of this? It's like a one what in four, to... and then you need to get not really unlucky his... for the rest of the game. His deck is like a lot more ice than lightning, and he's got two dark uh, light cards as well. So, you know, there's. I think there there was a there was more than a fifty fifty chance that he wouldn't draw the lightning card. 
and he lo- and G just lost the Shiva. That's wonder, really unfortunate. I would love for him to look at this now, and he's just like, "Oh wait, I can force the else." Oh. <laughs> like... That's literally what I did in the semi-finals. It was so depressing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, but G doesn't have another Shiva, I don't think. I think they're all gone. Which means he's going to just have to play a fair game, which is never going to go well for him. I feel like Josh has quite the nerves now. He's just like, fate is refusing to let me win this. He's <laughs> like, that's a speculation in his, in mm. his mind. That's a, it's a real tilting thing when you when you know it's a really easy lethal. When both players know it's a really easy lethal and it doesn't happen because you didn't draw a lightning card, it's literally all you need. Um, we'll see how it affects Josh. It probably won't affect him too much, but we will see. Break zone. G is looking through his break zone for a flan to rip the card. Oh, so out now we're going to see what it is at least. If it's a lightning card, then Josh made a mistake. If it's a lightning card, we just all roll our eyes. Yeah. Will we see it? I, d- I don't know. He might oh, search well, his deck for another one. All right, he might just be making space for Jill in the butt. Maybe he could he could do that. Play the oh, flan. He's, he's using the flan's ability to get the last one out. More flan. It's cool. It's kind maybe of maybe he needed to get the last card to be able to play. No, he didn't. I was going to think terror, but that means nothing. It's a real shame we can't see the break zones. Shot. Yeah, it's a real shame that from this pet spectate we can't see them. Otherwise, we. It's probably mini- so G, means that we G's looking there. for just to make sure there's not another flan in his break zone, but I don't think he checked his damage zone. There could be one there. It's always a big trap, but he found it. <laughs> what a mistake to make. So It'd be the awful. next game, have a notepad keeping track of the Shivas since we can't look at the... Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Graveyard. I will do the same thing. Mainly, the, the, the main things we want to track are Shivas and Terrors and Lightnings. I think uh, G's deck plays a lot more yeah, Terrors. A but te- Terror is a really big oh, one as well. Uh, Freeman only plays one of the Ice Terror, whereas uh, G plays All these three. All big ones, actually. <laughs> yeah. Hey, who knew Ice is actually really powerful? Look, we haven't actually mentioned a single Lightning card, really, as being a good card to think. Oh, I guess Lightning. But Lightning is basically I'll just a five-drop Shiva, right? Uh, yeah, well, that's the thing. Else, <laughs> that lightning's an expensive Shiva. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a Shiva with with a body that can be removed before you can do the double effect. It's not even instant. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now we're gonna oh definitely see if that was a lightning card in hand, or are we not? Is he got another way to make him discard? Because he definitely would make him discard otherwise. Cards, Kazusa. The heck is going on about? Okay, and then he's and then just he's... gonna rip the card out of his hand just so. Like, I'm not being funny, but I would have probably made him discard before playing. I would have probably kept the bards up. I don't know. Like, I think it's definitely a mistake not to make him discard before you choose what you're gonna do. Even though it, it makes no relevance, it's just good to see what's not in his deck, you know? Okay, yeah. so it wasn't a lightning card. Josh didn't play terrible. I. I would have kept open both bards here if I was G. Would you have? I feel like I would have left open a bard, yeah, but it's like, um, so Josh, right now what's going through Josh's mind is, uh, well, or what, what's probably going through Josh's mind, uh, Josh G, is he's like, what cards do I lose to? And then like, what does it matter if I leave a bard up? But all it, of these things it matters hugely. There's literally no way he dies not, if he leaves both up because he has two cards in hand at the end of turn and two bards up. So but even there's even no lightning, way he, his board. he just falls further behind. So he die. He's like guaranteed to die in the next like three turns if he doesn't. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean it's, it's risk reward, but the chance of, of Josh or Freeman drawing a Shiva or lightning is pretty high at this point now. So I would always. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a player that kind of tries to play around things too much. It's something that Toby has told me, but I. No. I just think it's a bit. It's a bit too risky, and there's What's not a lot on? of reward. Oh, you've been disconnected. But that's okay, because I can still see it. Oh, you can you can still see the game. I'm hoping that the game... I don't know why it's disconnected. Internet should be... 
All right, I'm back. Yeah, they can keep lines. It's all good. So you got to think, what is uh, Josh G trying to devout back? Because he, like, he's almost certainly going to be using that devout next turn. Unless he draws the nuts. He's almost certainly going to be using it. And you think the best target's probably Celes here? Like, if Terra's a good target, then he's probably dead, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh so, uh, jo uh, Freeman just played a ghoul and passed with uh, two backups open to be able to use the ghoul. Now, that ghoul is actually going to just create a huge amount of pressure. Josh G now needs to win, basically, in the next three turns, I would say. Otherwise, he's not going to be able to cope with the Shiva every turn. And I guess that's... I mean, that's the first time I've seen actually play the ghoul. And it looks good here. But I, I, if I was going to tweak his deck, the first thing I would take out is the ghoul. <laughs> The reason he has the ghoul in there is it's, for, it's the only target for his one Sidworth, and Sidworth is an amazing card if it has any target. Yeah, um, but... But I kind of don't like the ghoul either. In our games, I did have huge trouble against the ghoul, though. If you are ahead, it's like it's like a Namon that you can never really remove. It's... I mean, here, it's just it's just going to win on the game on its own, really. Yeah, exactly. And G... But it's like, a Shiva could have done it. It's just more Shiva. Yes, it's it's a fourth Shiva. The kind of stays that's, that's the uh, that is entirely the chant of this match is just more shiver. It's actually worth noting that Josh G could do a very good play here by letting like by passing the turn now, leaving open devout. Then Freeman would use ghoul to dole something, and then and then it goes back to his main phase. He could devout back the Celes, freeze the ghoul, and that gives him an extra turn. Um, and you know potentially <laughs> he'll have. It, I mean, it's it's a weird cheeky play, but he'll potentially have four forwards. <laughs> Um, I, to be honest, I just don't see any way he can win from here because Josh Freeman is never going to leave himself open to being dead to Shiva. And we know there's at least two Shivas gone from G's deck already. There might be a third. And, and honestly, there's no way he wins without a Shiva. Now, let's, let's see if Josh G makes the play with the Devout. I think it's literally the only way he can actually even survive next turn. Okay, so Josh G is attacking into with, with, with his Sarah. So there's two reasons to there's two oh he just hit a devout as well that's funny but there's two reasons you do that either you have a shiva in hand and you're going to devout like a genesis or something or you're trying to get tiebreaker points and you're about to concede I literally can't think of any other reason <laughs> tiebreaker okay. points I don't what, like okay he just played a Celeste by by tapping four so maybe now he uh like breaks the devout for a genesis. But then he's still dead to... I think he's just dead on board, maybe. No, he's not dead on board. But he's dead to uh, Shiva or Lightning. Which we know there's still lots left in Freeman's deck. He's doing oh, a kind Sarah of Toby play. The two mana Sarah also. That yeah, that's on another one that, that's probably lethal. There's... there's. Oh, okay. So the reason he had to do... He had to devout the Genesis and freeze the lock was because Josh still has two locks left in deck. <laughs> Freeman has still two locks left in deck and that's lethal oh as well God, there's just there's terrifying. just so many ways that freeman wins the game off top decks now <laughs> and and i guess g's seen that he's seen that if he get you know if josh just draws normally he's gonna eventually win so he has to be really aggressive he has to take crazy risks so now freeman's at three damage which means uh g's board of five forwards is actually lethal if he has like a crazy actually it's just lethal because he has double bard so he could have just double bard into shiva and he wins the game if Freeman didn't draw one of the, like, five cards that will win in the game this turn. <laughs> uh, what fun it is to watch Ice Mirrors. Hopefully, hopefully Freeman's just really good and draws Lightning. It's crazy. This turn is actually really cool because if Josh didn't draw the win, he probably loses next turn. That's even, insane. Even, even that without... is absolutely insane. Yeah, so if he didn't draw a forward, then Josh G just has him dead on board. Um, because of the double bard. But I imagine Josh G probably has a Shiva in hand. Because of the way that he set that up. It looks... it. Oh no, maybe he doesn't. Oh, it's... Okay, it's a Celes. So that means that... That means that G needs a Shiva. Uh, yeah, he needs exactly a Shiva in hand and he wins the game. Is it a Shiva? He would just... He would literally... I mean... 
I don't think it's a complicated lethal. If he there's has no a Shiva, that's possible for no, there's Josh literally Green nothing either. from either player. And I, I, I think G is a good enough player that if he has a Shiva in hand, he would see this lethal because he literally just needs to tap four, double doll with Bard, discard a card Shiva, and it's game. I would love it if that was the case because because we've been we've been writing him off for the last four turns. It makes it will make us sound really stupid. <laughs> I'd be pretty angry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the stupid thing about ice decks. It's like. You can be losing the whole game, and then you just you hit a Jill Navar into the break zone, and then you top deck Shiva. So it, this literally isn't about skill anymore. It's who draws Shiva or Lightning first. I don't even think. Um... I'm really glad that the finals. I'm really glad the finals isn't about skill anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was about skill for both of them to get to this point. I'm impressed that G survived long enough to get to a position where if he draws a Shiva, that his one of Shiva left. Bearing in mind, literally his one of Shiva, if he does have it, he wins. Jo Freeman is way more likely to draw one of the... He's probably only got two cards, uh, two or three cards left in his deck that actually win in the game. But it's it's not that bad because G has less cards, so there's higher probability for the draw. We can talk about statistics all day. Realistically, one of them is just going to draw it taking a long time to think about the turns which means there's not much going on g just played a flan and he's going to use it to get rid of a card josh discards setzer which is actually really relevant because he could have played the setzer to find the light like, terror to find the shiva which would have won in the game although he wouldn't have had the cards to do it but he, it would have been a two turn win so g's passed the turn with two bards open two cards in hand Oh, there's a Shiva. Is that a Shiva? He tapped two. Is it a Shiva? No, it's a... Oh. <laughs> it's a Jill <Gionabar. laughs> So, Freeman just uh, doled the Genesis and then froze both the sets and the Genesis, which means there's, there's literally no way he can win this turn. Yeah, so Freeman is putting himself in a position where he doesn't lose to the Shiva, basically. But... So it might mean that he has to Shiva without Josh needing to, without Freeman needing to Shiva, which means that it's just Freeman's game 100% at that point. Unless Freeman just makes a huge mistake at some point. How likely is G? So G has three forward standing and four cards in hand, whereas Josh has five forward standing and he's going to have three in hand. Josh G is going to have to use his bards this turn to not die. Or or something in hand, you know, he, like, because uh, Freeman is going to have to party attack. So if... G has the other Shiva in hand, the Opus 3 Shiva, he could actually have a bit of a blowout there. But once again, Freeman might have Runic, and that would be a blowout. So there's attack going there's an attack going in uh from Freeman's Genesis. I imagine it just will be blocked by Sid Alstein. Which means Freeman probably just has his other Genesis in hand. He's probably just gonna I'm also really surprised that um G allowed the lock potentially to turn sideways because if if he has another if freeman has another lock in hand then he just wins he just he has to keep the lock dulled so the lock has turned sideways but freeman did not use the special But they're I'm just, just wondering why g hasn't been putting in like one hit every turn or something like that just... oh he used he used um if he couldn't win if he couldn't Zalira. win without finding his shiva because he dies he's going to die to the ghoul to the ghoul but just because of the fact that both oh, the shivas correct. and the lightnings and the ghouls it's exist cool. but neither player can attack otherwise they die to the top decks okay i'm just seeing i can't tell if this zalera is devastating or not it it seems pretty devastating it looks pretty devastating Wait, what, what's, go what's going on here? So G Wait, discarded Josh... two cards to play the Zalira instead of tapping two because he wants to use the Bard next to, uh, potentially this turn to dole uh, whatever Josh now, uh, Freeman now plays because he has lethal oh on board. Oh my gosh, what a stress! <laughs> I hate this! Yeah, it, it's really <laughs> stressful because it, it's all about who's dull and active. It's not really like who's alive and dead. It's, it's, it's a really weird well, not, position. I, it's, like, it's like we've been thinking that it's like that, right? But, like, Josh G obviously has displayed some sort of skill of, like, making sure, like, that's a Lyra lined up and such like that. So, like, it hasn't actually come down to the sheep. But 
their entire playstyle has. <clears throat> it, just because there hasn't been a Shiva top deck doesn't mean that the game isn't revolving around it. It's not, it's, yeah, it's still looming. <coughs> it's, you know, if, if neither player had Shiva here, they'd be, both players would be far more aggressive. It would be a complete, it'd, it'd be like, play, it'd be us. like Mono Earth versus Mono Water. It'd be entirely, you know, and neither player has haste because... Does he have an Alcid combo in his hand? That would be or kind is, of, that would be pretty good. Knight. It's an Onion Knight. Yeah. Who, who blocked? Okay. Mm. But that's... Okay. It keeps him alive unless there's the it Shiva. No, it, it keeps him alive because he doesn't, he needs to hit four times and he doesn't have any haste. I have to say that the scruffiness of Josh G's board upsets me a little bit. <laughs> like, what is going on with his backups? <laughs> you, I used to play Magic where sometimes people would play their lands in front and then they're like creatures and like forwards behind their lands. So it'd be like playing the backups and forwards reversed. And that used to annoy me so much. It actually used to my, make me feel... I put my break zone behind my backups and uh, uh. when I used to play... Golbez, I had a separate pile for Arc Fiends. <laughs> oh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> I am filth. I also forget to untap my backups at the start of every time. That's another thing that really annoys me. And I'm when pe when people tap their backups like opposite ways, what are you doing? <laughs> Why? <laughs> All right, I'm catching up. I'm catching okay, up. so it looks like G needs to do something. Other ways he's dead on board. Okay, he played Renoa. He's still... He's dead to... Uh... He's dead to Black Waltz. He's dead to Shiva or Lightning, obviously. He's dead to... No, he's not dead to Sarah. He's dead to Jill Nabar. Oh, that's a Shiva. Is that a Shiva? It's a two... Oh. No. Oh. Oh. It's a Genesis. He's dead to Genesis. Oh. He's dead to Genesis. That's... Oh, yes! Finally! <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Good win, Josh. Good win. Am I allowed to type in chat? Good yeah. Win. Nice, nice, nice. I think I think G could have probably not attacked that turn. Freeman Birch just won the first game in a really, really long, grindy, let's wait to draw Shiva matchup. I see no reason why this game going forward that we're going to watch will be any different to that. <laughs> what do you think, Vince? <laughs> uh, no, it's always going to come down to the Shiva land. Who doesn't draw them in the opening hand and is forced to discard them? Which was yeah, Josh. Which was be... which was Josh G last game, right? He he had to discard one early and he hit another into the break zone, and it basically. I wouldn't say that was the reason he lost the game. I'd say that's the reason why he couldn't be aggressive to win the game, because he he just didn't have Shiva ever. Um, there, you know, there were lots of other it factors. Did, I couldn't see Josh G's opening hand, but it didn't seem like he was uh, being aggressive enough on to uh, Freeman at the start of the game. But um, yeah, also there were a heap of things throughout the game that just did. He, well, he he played a forward early and it got Al Sidded, and then he just didn't play a forward for a while. And then by the time he did play a forward, it got Genesis. You know, it, it's Ice is a very tempo-y, snowball-y matchup, and 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 what happened was the the first forward that G played died, the second got dodd and frozen, and then G was sat at six damage for the rest of the game. I think he did really well to not lose I, I guess, you know, Freeman did really well to not draw a lightning card as well, but it, it's an interesting game. If Josh Freeman's deck takes just like a tiny bit of advantage and then land and then draws lightning, which we haven't we didn't see like all of last game. No, but, we didn't. Um, I didn't even see him discard lightning. it. But basically Josh Freeman's deck is far more snowbally than Josh G's, but they're both pretty snowbally because they're both playing ice. But um it's, it's it's all about the early game, you know. I mean, if if Josh Freeman gets Red Mage into a Lightning backup into Devout into just playing forwards for the rest of the game, it's really good for him. But um, Josh G can also do the same kind of thing. Okay. These are um two really interesting players, just by the way. So Josh is probably I well I would say the most consistent player in the UK. He's uh one like this is his second time in the finals of Octagon Open. Last one he won. He's also came uh sixth at euros um and uh eighth at worlds so i mean it's the, as someone from the uk that's a contentious topic uh 
It, I, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I, I felt bad saying it around you. <laughs> no, no, I'm not thinking about me at all because Josh is definitely far more consistently better than me. Um, there's no question about that. But you know, it's it's hard. It's hard to compare Josh and Alex because Alex plays a lot less than Josh. He doesn't go to the big tournaments. Yeah. He 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 was you know he was oh, commissioned was to go to Winter too. Cup. Um, yeah. I, I'd say in in like international level tournaments, Alex has done far better than Josh. In, yeah, in fact, yeah, there's no has, comparison like, to how much better Alex has done in international tournaments. But in non-international tournaments and th things like this, Josh Freeman has done better. Uh, basically, the UK has a seriously good player base, and we're <laughs> we're now refined to one one person going to Worlds, essentially guaranteed. So I'm sad. Because there's there's probably eight people in the UK that are good enough to go to Worlds, but that's another topic. But yeah, if if he wins this, it'll be his second Octagon Open, and that'll be it, that'll be crazy. That's like such a crazy thing to say that you've won two Octagon Opens, and there's only been four in a row, back to back as well, back to back. Yeah, uh, I think I think Josh it. Freeman is a bit sad that he's not playing against Toby in the finals because they have a bit of a oh, grudge that's... thing going on because Toby always beats Josh, and it's really funny when it happens. So I think Josh was hoping to play against Toby for his ego, but he's also kind of relieved not to play against Toby because he thinks he's got. I think he's more favoured against Josh G than Toby, and I think I, I don't think that's an insult to. Oh no! What a terrible start for Freeman. But I, I don't think that's an insult to G. I just think Toby's very good, and Josh has played against him many oh, times, God. and his win rate is poor. Is that, so? Is that Freeman has played poorly game, turn one? Yeah. I initially think that this looks like we're seeing a game three, but I've also played games against Josh, and if his hand lines up, he can just play um, all forward simulator, and he can just. But his deck is not like... designed for it. It's he's got a lot of odd numbers. He he needs yeah. he needs to go to at least one backup before he can start doing that. I'd say, and G's taking it's... full advantage by playing four backups. Um, oh, I don't know if that's full advantage. You know what? I would I would 100% here if I was Josh, slam two forwards on the board and run at his face and leave like a lightning in hand, preferably. I would like that's if he's got it because yeah, like, you can't play four backups. I would probably like if your hand is perfect. I would probably discard two, play Genesis, and then leave the rest in hand, and then it forces G to play. Oh, is that a Shiva? Does that kill him? Um, which Shiva? Which Shiva? It's it's the EX Shiva, but I don't know if if G has discarded a Shiva yet. If it does, that's so bad for Freeman. I actually think that Freeman is favoured if he goes like two forwards right now. If he can, um, even just one forward is like okay. Yeah, if he just if he just plays Genesis, forces uh, G to play a forward, then Al sits it, then he's probably favoured, and that is what he did. I'm sorry, dude. I woke up my housemate. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So that that is exactly what uh, Freeman did. So this might be a really quick game. It might be well, it's probably going to be a really quick game either way. Thing is. Uh, Ice has so many ways to deal with aggression. It has Terra, it has Zalira, it has John Abart. But basically, G is thinking the next thing I play is going to get outsided. So I'd be tempted to just play Lock Setzer, even without making him discard. Okay, S Sarah is very good because it forces the discard, and I w I would okay. even be tempted to make like play a Flan and make him discard again. You just w you just want him to discard his whole hand to play the outsid combo. I um yeah I tend to, I tend to agree. If he has an outsid combo, then. He's in a good spot, but yeah. Okay, the flan. Just is... I would just crack it. Crack it! Oh crack dear! It. Don't don't pass. Crack it. I guess what he's hoping is oh, to, to get to three flans next turn. And if he can resolve oh, the three also, flans, he wins. The last card in hand might be Sid Ulster. Oh, I don't. I don't know if that matters. I guess either way, ends up. Al Sid. Okay, it's definitely Al Sid. Why is it on but that this, side of the board? But, because now Josh is up, uh, Freeman's upside down. This is literally, oh, why, why this is, is literally all Freeman has, right? This is literally the only thing. These four forwards either win in the game or he loses, because he's just never going to recover them now. So it's interesting to see what's left in uh, Joshi's hand. If he hits another Shiva. I actually think Freeman's got this. It, it purely depends what the next play is for... Um, because he, yeah. he can have Sid Alstead in hand, uh, get another Flan out, play the Flan, make him discard a card, then kill the terror probably um and, and then and then freeman actually can't attack oh no, you wouldn't kill the terror you'd even, kill the rig i guess even if you have no sid Alstein in hand i think you flan that card anyway like like we were saying you definitely do, cause yeah yeah I, I mean it was a mistake not to flan last turn i think i think so but i, I think he really wanted to have it up oh no you you can't play Alstein and flan watch watch josh draw shiver and ice card <laughs> yeah the game would be over right this is a, this is just a general punishment. Like, if 
if someone goes all in, like discards their whole hand for backups and you haven't, like you've actually put a forward down first, you can do this against almost any deck. You can just play forwards and run them down and you'd be like, well, you overcommitted to long game. Okay, so he's yeah, getting the early. flan. You're that dead. means he doesn't have an Alstein. That means he probably is dead. <laughs> what could he have? Like, I guess Renault. Renault would be really good. No, he, uh, it needs to be like a Celes if he's playing the flan. Okay, so it needs to be a Genesis or a Celes. Vain. That is not enough. I mean, it's, um, it's enough in this. If, it's, if there's a Shiver or something, then you lose. Then it's game. Um, yeah. What's it? Sarah and Ice card as well. But, like, that's, like, pretty low stat. He's only got two Shivers left, I think, and he's only got one Sura, and he has to draw that and an Ice card. And he hasn't just summed it, so he didn't have it. Because, you know, there's there's literally no thought needed to do that play. What a disappointing way for the finals to possibly end, though. Oh, as, I as much as the... disappointing at all. Like, oh, well, I, get, and, I guess it depends what kind of player you are. A little a little bit of history about Josh G, because I um, only met him recently, but he told me a bit about uh, how he got into the game. This is his first ever trading card game. And uh, he was like top 100 on his server for Dota um, at one point, and he was also really good at League of Legends. And his whenever he gets into a new game, all he does is he just basically harasses good players to coach him. And so he's been um, he he's only been this is his first ever trading card game, and he's just been coached by uh, he got he convinced Toby Henriot to coach him. That's why they're they're on a team they were playing the same deck, and he's come all the way to Octagon Open um, finals just on that. Which is really interesting. But I think this kind of like, I wouldn't call this super disappointing because this is, I suppose Josh got here through a tremendous amount of skill, obviously. He beat the world champion in a mirror map. But it's uh, kind of rookie error um, on his part. Or maybe it was just how he had to play them. To, I think I probably would have um, played it the same. Getting to four backups when your opponent has nothing is pretty depressing for them. It looks I like. Would, I would have never done what Josh did here. I because I think he played the Jill last, right? I would have probably just played the uh, Duke Lark, and been quite happy with that, being ahead by three backups. Uh, he also like the issue was he discarded a lot of forwards for it. If he was discarding backups to play backups, then that's fine. It looks like all he's going to do is make him discard though, and then hold up the bard. The bard does absolutely nothing here though. There's a I am Ooh, so that that the, last card in Josh's hand is either a lightning or a shiva. It's, it's, a, it's a lightning or a shiva. <laughs> it has to be right. Or a shiva. <laughs> it literally That's only it. can be that. There's n it or a Sarah. Be, it's lightning or shiva. It's no, you don't keep. Uh, yeah, you would. Maybe Sarah, you, Sarah here is fine. Too. Just because you can play it next turn, but like. Do you know what would be if really if clutch it was Sarah, though? He would have stopped and thought about it. If it was Sarah, he would have stopped and thought about it. No, I don't think so. I, I think it's, you keep the Sarah over the Lightning, though. Because you because you can't play Lightning next turn. Okay, which Shiva did he discard? He, dis oh, he actually discarded... He discarded <laughs> the Opus 4 Shiva, but I think he probably should have kept that in hand. And he definitely should have doled the... He should have frozen the Alcid, not the Rigdi. Because uh, you don't want to block Alcid. But you, do, you would block the Rigdi, you just... Don't really want to block Alcid here if you can't help it. Okay, you, you definitely block that with Vayne because the worst he's going to do is discard two mm. play Onion Knight. That's terrible. Oh, okay, sick. Into Shiva? Wait. Does he just win? Did he not draw a light? Did he not draw an he, Ice card? He the Shiva. Yeah, but if he didn't draw an Ice yeah, card, he couldn't he make that play because <laughs> he would have just done that he straight away, right? Now. Well, yeah, he'll probably wait. That's hilarious. So now oh, wait. If Gene, he if he, Gene needs if to draw a Sarah, Sarah, is that the only other discard he has? And he needs to crack that. So we'll see what the last card is, because obviously he's not going to discard the Shiva. It must have been a Lightning card, or another Terra. Wait, he had... Okay, explain to me why Josh didn't go for Lethal. He had Le... Uh, did he not have Lethal? Um, no, okay, so what he was going to do, that's very clever. No, he was going to attack with Al Cid. The, um... Yeah, he was attacking with Al Cid. Wait, if the Al Cid no, got no, through, no, then it was the Lethal. Was pretty dull. Yeah, okay, that's right. No, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been, because uh, the Rig Deer and Terra had to be dull. So he only got two attacks. He would only get two attacks through. But um, whatever this sets as such just gets discarded. So it's just going to be the struggle to get through that last. I don't know if Josh, if Freeman wants to even play the Shiva. Like, do you trade a card and a backup for a Shiva? It's kind of, I guess you have to. But the longer this game goes, the worse it gets for Freeman. And now that Celis is up, like, he's going to search for Celis and then he can't even Shiva. I really hope G searches for Celis. Oh. I really, really hope that's what happens. Oh my gosh, yes. He's like looking, maybe he doesn't have any more Celis left. That'd be really awkward. One of these decks only has two. I think it's the. I think it's Josh G's. Can you check? Because I can't. He, he searched for Locke, so it's possible he only has two. 
And he does have one in the break zone. It looks like he discarded the Celes to play the Setzer. That seems like a mistake. I would have just kept Celes in hand. Shiver, and it rips the lock out of the hand. Oh, wait, no, no. Oh, yeah, because it either breaks. Yeah, so you've got to. He breaks the bard this turn, so he loses the lock. I, the I don't know. Like, the only. The, literally, the only way Freeman can win now is over Shiva. And if he just kept. If he I kept Celes and Setzer in hand, he could have then used Runic to stop the Shiva, and then he still had bard open anyway. He may not have had the extra forward, but he doesn't need the extra forward. I, I just really don't like discarding the Celes there. He didn't have enough cards to play Lightning. Sarah would have been the only other option, but Sarah, but like, uh, if you play Sarah, then you've still got Bard open. You don't have to discard a card. The de I, I, I hundred percent think the better line to play there was to just pass, and then you you can use the bar just in case. Um. And you have the runic still, and then next turn you play that you play the setzer. And uh, it hits a terror. That's unfortunate. I actually think there's a good chance that you could be right. Um, I, I, it's like a like a really good chance. You you probably are right. I'm convinced because, um, that was the better line of play. Like, there's I don't think there's well. a draw that punishes that play more than playing discarding the the Celes there. If especially if he only has two. If he had another Celes, uh, or he like made a mistake, there was a Celes in his break zone. I can understand that. If if he was going for the Celes, it makes sense. But discarding the Celes oh, there gosh. made no sense to me. But we we're still in a position where Freeman actually can't win without a door and freeze effect. Well, yeah, Freeman can actually start building back up and just accept to be like, okay, my board's slightly bigger, like, and I have you and six damage, so... Yeah, so you can I never can, attack. I have this space to build backups and then play a normal game and just accept that I have this damage lead. But, I mean, it's a shame that we can't see the break zones because we can see how many backups each of them have discarded. Yeah, oh, he's discarded a fair few. There was a Jilnabar, there was a Black Mage. That but he's just, discard he's just discarded two there as well. What could that be? Devout, okay. Yeah, devout. Ooh. Uh, I, wish that, I wish I knew if there was an arm on. And just going to six against an ice deck, it's just horrible. He and now he's in a horrible position where he he has to attack, but he can't attack because he'll die if he does. That's a Renoa or a lock. Uh, um, for no value. So uh, another thing to remember is that. All of Freeman's terrors are also shivers. Which is the way actually. That Josh G is floating cards in his hand. It looks like he has a counter shiver should anything arise. Yeah. If you notice, actually, G made a very good play. Before he took the damage of the first hit, he used. He broke his um, bard to dole the terror just in case he hit a shiver so he could kill that terror because he really doesn't want uh, Freeman playing or, or, you know, drawing another terror oh, to be able to find a shiver. That's super cool. Little percentage plays like that sometimes win you games. I, I still think G's winning this game. I just think that um, Josh Freeman is... only has one shiver left in his deck, just by the way. But he has lightnings. So he, he's going to leave the Rigdi alive for the rest of the game now, basically. Uh, but he only has... I think he only has one lightning as well. Uh, oh, oh, it's game. Okay. It's game. He's going to attack... There's force actual the... movement to be made. No, it's simple, right? You attack the Rigdi, force the block, then you Rigdi... Then you devout Rigdi oh back, kill God. the Setzer... And then it forces a Shiva. Forces some. Yeah, if he has if he has Shiva as response, then I can't believe that we didn't see that. But if you have a Shiva as response, then you lose. Yeah, this this is a you have to Shiva, right? It's the only way you survive. You it. Shiva after he breaks the devout. You don't Shiva before he commits. The no, devout. no, no. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. No, wait, no, but no, because That's... no, you have to do it now, because he could now because Freeman can now attack then devout. You're actually forced. That's why. That's why Josh G stopped uh, oh Freeman gosh. from attacking. He has right. to Shiva. So Josh Freeman isn't forced oh to do gosh. it. That is so brutal. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, that's so brutal. Yeah, but oh do you know what? God. Fair play to G for spotting that because it took me a while to see that. I I don't know if I would have let Freeman attack there. He just traded a rig deer for a Shiva. Yeah. <laughs> But he could just have a terror in hand, right? And now Josh oh Freeman loses every his Dude, whole board. No, oh my gosh, that is that is ridiculous. I'm actually so impressed that he he saw that. That is not something that most people would see. Uh this is exactly what I expect expect from Josh Freeman, but yeah, actually both both players there made very heads up plays, like playing the devout, 
and then yeah, and seeing and Josh, the lethal. Josh G to spot and then realize yeah. that. Although was... to be fair, Josh, if, if Josh G hadn't attacked, it wasn't a lethal. But I mean, if Josh G has a terror in hand and he draws another one, oh no, he doesn't even need to draw another one. If he just has a terror in hand, he can just kill something with Celes. Um, I, I, he's still in a really good spot. Okay, so so Freeman has, has seen the only way that he, he's seen that a bad thing would happen if he has terror in hand. So he's stopping the seller. He's stopping the the extra four K from happening. And also, it's it's basically a genesis at this point that that sellers. Yeah, I'm really impressed with that turn from both players. It's not often I think, wow, that was sick. Probably wouldn't have done that from if I was either player there. <laughs> An attack. So has he just drawn another Shiva? <laughs> The attack here is actually really Maybe brutal from the lock because either way, it just it hurts Freeman so much because either he blocks and loses a potential kill target, yeah. or it's he loses a card. Instant. Yeah. And it, it, the fact that Freeman discarded Devout, like the fact that Freeman discarded an ice card, tells me either he, it's another ice card in hand or it's a lightning in hand. So if G has a Shiva in hand, he has won this game. I'm calling it right now. I don't see a way Freeman I just can, think, I just can come back. How many times they've had to say that word? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> both both players are on the I need Shiva plan. Well, no, G doesn't need Shiva to win. G just needs Freeman not to have Shiva when he doesn't have exactly. Shiva. Exactly. He just needs to but match if, if G has, Shiva. If G has Shiva, then it doesn't matter if Freeman does. Yeah, he's not using it offensively. He's just going to attack with Lock every turn now. If he has Shiva, that's it. And that's the only reason he'd attack, right? I can't see I mean, any he reason why just... he'd ever attack another. He, no, he could just attack and force a block. He might just have another Celes in hand. Yeah, Josh G needs to make sure he has three things. Damn it. If he had a Terra in hand, he had the exact moment to do that as well. It's interesting to note that so G throws the Genesis instead of the Terra because he could have, um, because <clears throat> Freeman could have Terra special in response to get a Shiva. But I think if he had if the, he had, I think he would have just done that anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, he, he would've probably would have just done that anyway. So I, I think maybe that was a mistake. Maybe you should have done it to the terror just to, so that you're not afraid of that. I agree. I think you definitely should have frozen the terror instead. So oh, Jonah Bart. So Josh oh D plays gosh. one Jonah Bart, which he's already got on the field. Which maybe, I mean, Josh Freeman probably knows that, right? He's probably got the deck open at some somewhere. But uh, Freeman plays three, so it's it's relevant. Sometimes that's yeah. going to happen. Um, I th at least one of Freeman's is already in the break zone. Actually, no, two. That's his last one on the butt, so that's not a fear. How big was that, Jill? I don't think it was that big. Honestly, the only way that this game ends for Josh Freeman well is with a Shiva at this point. And, and frankly... Uh, he's, holding enough, he's holding enough cards in his hand that Lightning actually does it. If um, oh, well, that's Not if anymore. There is no Shiva. Definitely not oh, anymore. Oh, wait, there is... What it is Terra just landed? Oh my god! So so okay he's so that so, so he's Shiva. yeah he's he searched the other Shiva, which means he probably has Opus three Shiva in hand. Okay, if he's playing a backup, he's probably or is he going? So lightning isn't even an option for him because he doesn't have Rigdy anymore. <sighs> All right. Well, I talked a lot of smack about Josh G's opening play, but he won the game. So. <laughs> Fair well, enough. we we can't say he's won the game until the seven point of damage has happened because Shiva exists. Oh, but v versus no, almost any no. other deck here, you can you can say like, oh, yeah, this this game is over. I think but... he's smart enough to uh, to get checkmate from here. Now, the big question here, and I think this will be a showcase of skill, is is how aggressive do you be? Because in this situation, I would be, I think I would be not aggressive enough, but. Uh, we, we've seen games where Toby and, you know, obviously Toby has coached Josh G. Toby is very aggressive in situations like this. Um, so I expected Josh G to attack. Uh, I mean, the question is if he, if he has, you know, Shiva, Shiva, Celes in hand or something, he might, he might just... Okay, so they're trading Terrors. Interesting. Um, I actually... I actually think that that's what Josh G wanted. Yeah, because now he just he he just shivers uh, to kill the Genesis and attacks. But it's possible that um, Josh has Terra Terra in hand, in which case that is a, that is definitely a way you come back into this game, right? The Genesis shouldn't live because we we know that um, 
we know that Josh G has the Opus 4 Shiva in hand. The Genesis can't survive it. Uh, Josh, Freeman, and Birch. He needs, he needs yeah, Shiva. He needs he exactly needs Shiva. No, sorry. He needs... <laughs> I've said that too many times. He needs exactly Lightning, and he needs Josh G not to have uh, Opus 3 Shiva. And that is literally yeah. the only way this game ends well for him now. I, I don't I don't think Josh wins next. I don't think Josh survives next turn. Josh Freeman. If If Josh G untaps, I think he wins. So... There's, there's a lot of luck now. I, I'd be so surprised if Josh G didn't have two Shivas in hand. All right, it's a lightning. He's saying he's he's telling him show me show me the Shiva and then I'm gonna concede. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. And there it is. Yeah, there we go. And it, Josh is going to and there Freeman go. is going to concede. Um, yeah, generally, I think that if you play a forward turn one with a deck that has far more odd costed forwards than even, um, okay, so they're not remaking. I, I I just think it's terrible that that deck. It's weird. The Ice Lightning deck kind of wants to get to five backups. It's really powerful on five. It's really really weak on zero. And I think we just showcased that. If, and I said at the beginning of the game, if if Josh Freeman Birch doesn't win with those four forwards he played by turn three, he was not going to win. He wasn't going to get more chance to play many more forwards. And I don't think he did play anymore. I think he literally devoured a Celes, and that was it. The rest of the game. Ah, uh, yeah, you're correct. That was that was the only forward that came in. So it's just it's just weak to do that. Um, I'd be interested to see if Freeman Mulligan. I I'd be really surprised if he didn't, if he goes turn one Terra. And turn one Terra is probably the best turn one forward play in his deck, because it's like a two drop. It's just it's like the best costed right. There's there's literally nothing good else. Like there's there's not like a Gilgamesh in his deck. There's nothing like that. It's purely everything he does has an ETB that affects the board in some way, but he needs other things on the board, or his opponent needs things on the board for those ETBs to work. And when I say ETB, I mean enter the battlefield. We've had two drawn out games. Uh, everyone waiting for Shivas. A lot of waiting around for Shivas. Um, okay, so there's, there's a lightning game. gone. Mm, one of the three lightnings. Okay, so we've only seen a lightning as an important card, although Josh just discarded a Celes. The Celes is so important here. I don't think I would discard them. In this, I absolutely had to, you know. So who's had a better opener? Josh Freeman Birch has had a better opener. Yeah, and it's purely because he went first. Basically, both these decks really, really want to go first. And uh, whoever goes yeah, second is, is, definitely. is definitely unfavoured. There's not a huge yeah, amount of matchups in this game where going first actually affects it that much, but these two decks have so many searches, they're going to overdraw a lot in turn two, and we'll see what, we'll see how awkward Josh G's turn is now. Yeah, and that's that's exactly the thing. If, you can't, if you're playing a... Um, just if you're slowly rolling out to two on turn two, and you've yeah, got look how second, awkward that is. Oh my god, um, that doesn't work out. That that Kazusa is actually one of the um, most important cards in the matchup I found. Well, not not really not playing one of the most it here because mm -hmm. there's only one of. But um, when it shows up, it actually is really really brutal if you can do it to an empty. Josh G doesn't like to play it that way. He told me that he likes to keep his hand pretty large throughout the game. But I yeah. think, like I said in game one, it's. Uh, if you can force a top deck game, you're probably going to win as the mono eye. There's a Shiva gone for Josh G, a Lightning and a Celes gone for Josh Freeman. There's two There's two Celes. So no more runic. Oh he discarded a Celes to play a Celes. Interesting. So Josh G is gonna be on five cards. I'd be really tempted. I don't know what's in his hand, right? But I'd be very tempted to just pass the turn. And at the end of Josh Freeman's turn, use uh, uh, Flan's ability. So you start your turn three or four with eight cards in hand, and that lets him play out a kind of a powerful turn. Um, Ooh, that's actually yeah, that's really nice. Because he he couldn't do it on his turn because he'll have five cards by the end of the turn. He has to do it at the end of Josh's turn, Josh Freeman's turn. But it looks like he's gonna do something. Yeah, it looks like Banana Sid instead, which is which is better if you've got it because you want the backups out. Yeah, it's it's better to get a curve. Although, I, I I really don't like it when people... I know you don't have a choice often, but I don't like it when you go to three backups, you play the Sid to get to the third backup, and you search for Setsa, because it means it's basically two turns before you do your power play. And it's it's that's two turns too I'd long. I'd really like to see a Devout. 
I'd really like to, to see a devout from Josh Freeman right now because then he's got both his colors up. Yeah. Why are he's, both uh, players kept playing? His hand size pretty large while using all his backups. They're both playing really scruffy with their board. Like the forwards are. I don't know. I, I really like being very particular about where my cards go on my board state. That is a set set, probably. <laughs> so we're going to go set it into Banana Sid here, almost certainly. Ah, uh, yeah, Banana Sid. And then into a lock. See, this is a far more powerful... Or he might actually... He's probably just going to play a lock here because he's got the two forwards out already. So he's going to force the discard off of Josh G. What's um what's no. annoying is just the fact that... Yeah, he he go, he'll go to the end phase. So the reason that he did that is because he wants to keep it four cards because if his hand goes down really low, we enter that simplified board state that we were talking about earlier. That's a really smart move by Josh because a lot of people would have um, immediately used their ice mana to fill in their curve and go to three backups. But Josh likes to play a slow game where he can have, have as many options in his hand against this deck. What because, I mean, what do you think about I just said, playing the lock the there? Ice deck top. Sorry? What do you think about just playing lock there, having three forwards making your opponent discard? Um, you so, go to two cards in hand, but you have three forwards. They don't, they it's, don't, uh, it's not going to have time to play for flat. It's, it's an aggressive play, definitely, but then um, you've played right into Josh G's game plan, which is make you have an empty hand and then have better turns than you. Yeah, constantly. but if you've got three forwards, he's not going to have time to be cracking that flan. He's not going to have time to search more flans. Oh, I think it's as simple as turning flan sideways and playing uh, Sarah. He only has. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Damage right now. So that's another lightning gone. So there's two lightnings gone for Freeman. So uh, the longer this game goes, the more likely Josh G is going to win, actually. Although Freeman still has more Shivas. So there's basically four win, uh, I win cards in Freeman's deck and two in Josh G. Um, also, another thing is if uh, Josh Freeman is trying to preserve his hand like this, it's likely because he's actually got the Alcid combo team. And that's what he, that's what he desperately didn't want disrupted. Yeah. That's true. So now Josh needs to dis Josh Freeman needs to discard. It discarded Genesis. So he's got Banana Sid in hand and likely Alcid Onion Knight, right? Because there's not many reasons you discard a Genesis here other than that. Yeah, exactly. Like that's exact that's the perfect thing that you want in this situation. That's the only reason you throw away a Genesis. Into a Sarah. That's not okay, so may maybe the uh... lock play would have been a bit of an overextension. He would have lost your whole hand. I still think it would have been My okay. gosh. When the banana sit is the best discard next, you know it's Alcid on your night. <laughs> yeah, this is another really all in, all in kind of play from Freeman. I'm, I, I don't know if I like it. It didn't work out well from last time. You're discarding backups when you don't uh, have a lot. I think, I think the play that guarantees Alcid resolves is the best play. I yeah, yeah, sure. I, yeah, I, I think he's being forced into it. Um, but I don't, I don't know if it's like. Mm. <laughs> Look at it edging off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's like, you know, he's, he's going to lose his last card. He's only putting him to three damage. Um, yeah, Sid Alstein, by the way, is a really good card. Because <laughs> uh, that Flan can rip the last card out of the hand. Then yeah, can you imagine a Sid Alstein kills... killing the Cellus here? Yeah. That's, that's yeah, why, it's like, it, it feels like a little bit... I know I was just saying, like, play, it's, the, it's play no, the lock, no, be no aggressive. What. The Sid, the Sid Alstein could come down, and uh, you could have not have played Alcid, you know? That would have also been the option. You would have lost your entire hand, your Alcid on your night combo, and then get out Sid Alstein. No, you would have been left with the lock in hand, which is fine. If you, um, if you played, if you if, played if Sid Alstein, had... he would have made you discard two cards, you would have had three cards at the end of the turn, so you discard both Alcid on your night, play lock, on curve, you have two cards at the end. Then you don't get blown out by Sid Alstein. Um, um, it's kind of like... Uh, yeah, it's hard to... It, it's it's difficult. Um, th this play relies on Josh top decking Shiva soon. More than if if he did the other play, he he wouldn't be back up screwed like element screwed. Um, he he wouldn't be in a position where like he kind of has to top deck Shiva, and that, and you know that's assuming that Josh G has anything to deal with four forwards. I presume he does. I feel like I feel I feel like Josh Freeman Birch is way favored here. Um... Not if not if I've, not I've if Josh G he, has a like he's still got, if he he's has still an Alstein in hand. Attacks. Yeah, so he's gonna do one if damage. If he has an Alstein, there's only two Alsteins. If he has an Alstein in hand, then it's a bit of a problem, but he still has party attacks. Uh, and if he doesn't have Alstein, 8k bodies is the largest body that um these decks kind of pump out other than Alstein. So Celis is the biggest thing. Uh, in but Celis is gonna die. 
you, you definitely target if the Sid Alstein. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's all a matter. Sid Alstein is a good play, and every other play is just kind of meh. Mm. So, uh, sets are into Celis is fine, or bloody hell, sets are into Terra. Uh, sets are, yeah, sets are, sets are in Celis is also really good. Sets uh, are in Terra, Terra kill two Terra things. Is... That's pretty yeah. good too. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of plays that Josh G could have here. He's thinking about it pretty heavily, so he may not have any of them. But if well, I'm or, if or I'm looking like... at board state and I'm seeing that I have six cards in hand, three backups, and my opponent has only two what backups, what would be terrifying is to have Setzer and uh, and Terra because then you find the other Terra. Yeah, that's that, Terra that's what I mean. You you uh, kill two forwards, you leave only Arsid on your knight up. You take you know whatever one damage. To... Oh, he might have it. Okay. Oh Honestly, gosh, if if he has it, if he has this combo, I I don't think Josh Freeman wins this game. Because it's I, such I, a blowout. I, okay, oh my gosh, no. It's, it's, it is it. It's, this is so bad. And, and... That sucks a lot. And he's gonna... Josh G is gonna make Josh uh, Freeman discard that last card. He's on top deck mode for the rest of this game. And he's, he's literally only gonna have two forwards. Wow. Dude, freaking Josh G. What a beast. That, uh, like, honestly, mm. that kind of... Uh, he still has three damage. Like, there is damage initiative, but like... Josh no, Freeman it's not Birch's enough. It's not enough to be in this position. Yeah. Josh Freeman Birch's turn is going to be so bad with like, if he has no cards in hand. Nothing. On, like, like, no, I, I really want Josh D to make Josh Freeman discard that last card. I, I Yeah, okay, good. I, I, yeah, good, good. Good. And... Okay, so it was an ice card. So like, that was, and that's what I've been saying. That was the plan that Josh oh, put himself gosh. on. He was trying to dis he was just trying to draw into Shiva to win. It was just yeah. It would have made it would have made his turn good too. Think um, about Amon last game, still... right? Think about last Amon game. Amon is actually a really good draw that keeps you in the game. Oh, he got it. Oh my gosh, he has one of those. Yeah, <laughs> and that, this is but, why Josh uh, is a scumbag. <laughs> the, the problem is I think that Amon's Amon, probably slightly Amon's better. actually better than Genesis because yeah. Amon has the ghoul effect that threatens every. Time. Oh, that that was actually kind of sad because that game was would have been closed up pretty nicely <laughs> without that draw. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't believe he ripped his arm on. That's oh, insane. Sid Alstein! Sid Alstein! <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Oh no! Dude, this is so close. This oh. is like a... This is like a They're both games. scumbags! <laughs> they are both scumbags! <laughs> oh, see, this, this, is oh why, this is why people like you and I don't get into the finals, because shit like this does not happen. <laughs> oh... My God. oh. Oh god. What what uh, <laughs> uh how does I guess Genesis or Shiva? It's just Shiva. It's we're, just... we're on the game plan where Josh Freeman Birch needs to draw Shiva. I feel like we haven't <laughs> been in this position today yet. <laughs> oh my god. Thing is though, like he needs to um Josh G needs to play a forward here, or he needs to hold Shiva in hand. I guess he's got oh he's attacking, okay, but he's just a crazy man then. He hit Shiva! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this game... This game oh is so God. crazy. Is he yeah, going to play Renoa is... and hold open Shiva? That would be so good. If, if he can if he can play a 3-drop... Oh no, or Sid Alstein would be good as well. Yeah, it's Sid Alstein by the looks of it. It has to be, right? 5-drop, uh, Sid Alstein. So... This game, oh. ladies and gentlemen, is over. You kill the Onion Knight. Is yeah. there a single thing that can be done? No, the game no. is over. This this game is is done. I think that you, you know you could have like three turns in a row where your draw really good, but I, I can't see a way that Josh Freeman Birch comes back from this. Genesis, Gen Genesis, Genesis, Genesis here would be nice, and it could. I mean, it looks like he's just oh done my. it. No, Terra. Oh, okay, that's that's a. Shiver. But it's not and even it's that good, right? It takes him to six, and then there's just nothing. Because Kazuka, Kazusa can literally rip the shiver out of his hand. Yeah. Oh, he probably didn't think about that. And that's his last Shiva. I think, is that his last Shiva? Let me, let me look at my no, stats. No, it's his, it's his second, second last. Shiva. That's his second Shiva. Yeah, okay. You still, I mean, I would have taken the Odin there, right? He's got one Odin in his deck. I don't think he thought about the Kazusa. Uh, it, Honestly, no, it looks like I Josh think, is a little think, bit tilted. I think you could. I would Kazusa the Shiva out of the hand. I, I would, I would but... discard my whole hand to get rid of that Shiva if I had to. <laughs> if I'm Josh G. <laughs> <laughs> Do you attack here? Depends what he's got in hand, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I probably... You, all you do here is probably tap the Kazusa yeah. and pass. Like, you, you attack with probably one more thing. 
tap the Kazusa, get rid of the Shiva and pass, because if even if he top decks the Genesis, then you dole the Terra, uh, and then you win next turn. Oh my gosh, man. Oh my gosh. The Sid Alstein. Hit a Terra as well. Sid Alstein did. Do you know, hitting that Terra is really good for Josh Freeman because he didn't want to draw that. That would have been bad. Like, it. it oh God, it'd be so good if he has. Is there any way for Josh G to dump his hand now without losing a card from Kazusa? Probably not. He's just going to do it. Nice, nice. Okay, Devout gone. I would probably just pass. Yeah, okay. So he yeah, did the, he did the play that I said. Yeah, he did the play that I said. Basically, even even a Genesis isn't lethal now. But Josh G doesn't have lethal as well next turn. So he's given Josh Freeman Birch two turns. Uh, I would have been tempted to attack with Setzer and then force me to use the, the Dole Bard. Um, because it, it means that I have lethal next turn. It's a, you know, it looks risky, but, you know, it looks risky, but actually it's not because you can't die. He doesn't, Josh Freeman Birch does not have any haste in his deck that he can play off of two cards and do backups. So I would have been tempted to attack with the Setzer as well. I'm really sad that, uh, I'm really sad that Freeman Birch didn't have, um, any sort of forward to play there. Like, even just a rig deer, you potentially play just to have a body. Well, no, I don't, I don't think you would, necessarily. Because at this point, Josh Freeman Birch needs to have some kind of a combo to get back in the game. Uh, and if he drew one of the combo pieces, you don't just play it because then you're never winning if you do that. Um, he's not dead on board. He knows he's not. He doesn't have to block anything here. So he knows that he's got at least one more turn to maybe draw a combo piece. You know, he may have just drawn Sid Rain's Ice card, in which case if he draws Onion Knight, he's, he's really in a good position. Well, no, he's not, but <laughs> he's, in a, he's in a much less shitty position. <laughs> Once again, I, oh no, okay, I wouldn't, yeah, there I wouldn't have attacked with all three, because it's possible that Josh draws a line. Yeah, no. no but last turn, yeah, like, yeah. can you imagine now, if um, if he did attack with Setzer last turn, he could have attacked with Setzer again this turn, forced a block. There's just, they, the cards don't exist. No, the, there isn't like an ousted from Opus 7 yet, that, you know, does better than what we have ousted for. I couldn't, uh, Zodiac. <laughs> Ultima. <laughs> Ultima would actually Josh be okay here, you know? <laughs> Ultima would actually be okay. <laughs> Zodiac. <laughs> Zodiac would not no, be wait, okay. You no. You lose if you use Zodiac. But, so, but Ultima keeps Terra. Alright, he's attacking. I That's would true. probably take that. No, I don't know. I don't actually know if I'd take that. Josh can't use Terra special now because he's got one. He's got the Terra in the break zone. So... You... I would probably... No, I'm just, he, no Josh has used declared an attack. Yeah, and I, I'm thinking about Josh G if he kills it or not. I, I, I think killing it is fine. Oh, right. I think right. killing it is fine. Because he's, he's gone to his declare attack stage. He can't play a haste forward now. Um, there's there's literally no I way that done. Josh Freeman Birch can win this turn. Yeah. No, th this game is over. I, I literally can't think of a series of... If, if I had my entire deck in my hand, I don't think I could win from here. Yeah, you know, obviously, if I discard infinite cards, then yeah, you could just play loads of forwards in the haste. But a lure no, but would yeah, be good. If a lure, only four cards. Yeah, but but only drawing two cards a turn. Even if I could literally stack my deck anywhere I want, I don't think I could win. Okay, so this is the turn I was talking about, though, where he he maybe had ice card Sid Reigns plus. He just discarded a Shiva to do that. That was his last Shiva. I mean, uh... That is a. Uh... Interesting. It's what do you think about that? Wait, did he did he just throw away a Shiva? He did, he discarded his last Shiva to do this play. Yeah, you have to. I guess that may, like of, of, like. I you mean, have you have to, to discard. Yeah, just otherwise you're dead, magic. right? Otherwise you're just dead on board. But oh, uh, that means now he is relying on one lightning to scum. Uh, yeah, to scum him out. The mana to do it. No, he doesn't have the mana but, to do it, and he uh, doesn't have a he doesn't have a way to actually draw. He needs a rig D. He needs to draw rig D plus lightning and then survive. No, no, no. He's got Sid Reigns. He's got Sid Reigns. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So no, he's just gonna chomp block with our Sid, I guess. Um, I think Onion Knight's the better block because the chances that you get, yeah, the chances that you get um, the combo and it, like save. So. Yeah, but it was purely because. Um, Alcid. I, I guess it. I guess it actually makes no difference because you're not using either of the abilities again. Yeah. 
No, uh, yeah. Except for maybe Onion Knight after a block. But yeah, but if you draw Onion Knight, then you attack with Onion Knight anyway. Yeah. yeah, there's one more turn left in the game. No, th this game is over. There's literally nothing. Uh, no, there's Sarah. No, it doesn't matter because oh, no. he's got the d Bard. He needs to do two points of damage. There's nothing Josh can do. Oh my gosh, he's still got two damage to go. I thought it was only yep. one. That was what I was talking it's about. Like, last damage. game was a similar situation, except... Dude. There he is. There's the GG. Josh G. Like, like, this is a really impressive win. Very, yeah. This, this is a really impressive win, honestly. Oh man, Josh immediately left. I, I would be pretty, like, I would be pretty annoyed at the end. Like, I could just imagine how annoyed Josh is just looking at that for like ten minutes, being like, "Oh, so I didn't win a second octagon open. That would have been nice." But seriously, <laughs> good job, Josh G. Yeah. Like, man. I think. And good job, Toby, for being an excellent coach at Steam. <laughs> <laughs> Toby has won this tournament in spirit. They can hold open the trophy together. And it's possible they, they get first and third, you know, if I don't have anything to say about it. That was really cool. Any closing thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 like, there was the one play of discarding the setups that I really didn't like from Josh G. And that was probably my only big concern. Um, I think... I don't know if... I don't necessarily know what Josh Freeman Birch's hand was uh, in game three, but I, I think he went a little bit too aggressive. I would have preferred either playing Locke or the Banana Sid because he never played another backup. So, you know, there, there comes a point in that matchup where you're on top deck mode for the rest of the game. And if I'm on top deck mode for the rest of the game, I'd rather have three backups and an ice and a lightning. That saying though, you know, Josh was kind of unlucky that he never saw a red mage. That would have changed the games. Massively. Yeah, that's another. That's another. I think they both played very well. I think for me, the best play, the best 100%. turn was a hundred percent when uh, the the rig D attack happened, and both players knew what was going on. Uh, I'm I'm really impressed with both players for seeing that. That was one of the highest level couple of turns, you know, of setup from yeah, both definitely. of them that I've seen in a long time. Uh, do you have any last thoughts? Yeah, definitely. Um. No, I think I think you definitely highlighted some of the most important things. Like, it, I I'm a bit sad. I wish we could have seen their hand because it's like the amount of puzzles that go on in this matchup were insane. But I think any the most important closing thought is uh, I would hate to be Josh Freeman Birch sit through that first game, that torturous first game, be like, oh gosh, I finally won that nice, and have it, uh, you know, not be for anything. <laughs> like that's the worst torture to sit someone through that and then not eventually win the match so but yeah i mean still it's, excellent it's like, a shame that his so game much, two was so, so poor because game game three was good you know i mean it was there at least there was some kind of uh fight back from both of them but game two it is a shame that he had such a poor draw yeah um but i think it was a great finals actually sometimes sometimes you yeah, watch a finals it was, and it's a bit I of a disappointment very good final yeah, it was so, such a it was such an interesting matchup too. Yeah, who's gonna who's gonna draw Shiva? That's good. <laughs> what do you? Okay, so so we've been talking about it so much, and we've been like casually, sarcastically bitching about it. What do you actually think about Shiva? Do you think it's a fair card? Do you think that it's it's fun? It promotes interactive gameplay. Do you think it's horribly broken? What do you think? I look at the uh, stats on the card and what it does. And I don't think, like, it's like a baseline when I look at it, it, I'm like, that shouldn't be broken. And then I see what it does in game. And I'm just like, this wins a bit too many games. And oh, it is the most frustrating card right now. But we said that about Emperor and we all adapted. So, Well, I never yeah. said that about not, Emperor, not I have to admit. Like... I, didn't, I didn't think Emperor. <laughs> a lot of people said that about Emperor. Yeah, I mean, Emperor is annoying I, I when you have Minwoo, Cecil, Steiner. But that takes that takes a lot of like effort to get that board state. Whereas Shiva is literally just a top deck away all the time. Um, I just I think it just would have been so much more balanced at three cost. So at least you can't like play no backups and top deck it and win. Um, I'm just I'm a little bit tired of of games being closed out by whether or not my opponent draws Shiva. But <laughs> it, you know I mean I guess. I just can't think of another card in the game that would do what Shiva does. That doesn't cost more than five mana. Hey, um, I just got an idea. I'm just going to see if I can get Josh G to join us. And then just like talk about his win for a second. Yeah, sure.